There we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Fisher. I'm here today with Alex Slemmer, Steve Barcelona, and of course, myself, Aaron Fisher. We are here with Conjure Community Club, the world's best magic club. And today we're going to be taking a look at the magic of the great card expert, Simon Aronson. So before we get started here, do us a favor, do what's best for us and you and hit that fantabulous follow button and the salacious subscribe button while you're at it. So you'll get notified every time we get new content up for the content machine. Hey there, Alex. What was the thing? Was there a particular, I see Red Sea Passover's one today. What was, was there a guiding principle besides beside how you decided to collect today's entire crop of Simon Aronson mystery? For all those of you that don't know, Simon Aronson put out a lot of magic and all different kinds of magic so you can categorize it in lots of different ways. So Alex, what was your take on it? Really, I'm picking out the ones that that I think are the the great hits, you know, like the ones that we're going to see today are ones that, that if you are a Simon Aronson super fan like I am, you know that these are like the ones that generally they, they get the reactions, you know, and quite a few of these I've I've performed, so I know what they get, you know, and seeing Simon really do that, get out every drop, it's really, really great. Mm -hmm. um, the one we're going to start with today, though, is sort of, uh, it's one that it, it was like, it's like it's he, he's well he's it's in the underground he's known as being the guy that can do this thing right but it's a really an interesting handling of a very popular coin trick that we all know and love in fact we've talked about it quite a bit in cc so this is a this is a this is a good one it's very interesting and you'll see the handling on this is interesting and different so uh let's take a look do you know do you know what the most popular magic trick is in the entire world it's producing a coin from a kid's ear. Yeah, absolutely. They do this around the world. Um, most of the magicians in the States use a half dollar because it's very big and very, very shiny. But in other countries, they would do the same trick with other currency. Uh, keep your eye on the coin. For example, in Africa, the African magicians would do this trick, but they would do it with an African coin, even with a hole in it. Now, now, I don't know uh, if you've ever been to England. The British magicians uh, do this, but they do it with an English penny. Oh. Is it? Now, really, they do. Um, but <laughs> um, in, in, in the Orient, a lot of the Oriental magicians uh, prefer to use, for example, a Japanese coin because they have a yen for that sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we know that's really an illusion because here in the States, we would always prefer to use a half dollar. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Great clean coin trick, man. I think it's really fun. I've always loved it. Yeah, and it's not just a magician's trick, right? Because we all know uh, here in the club that that's a. Uh, it's called quadruple spellbound. It's based on uh, what is it, Vernon? Yeah, spellbound? Vernon spellbound. Exactly. Right. The exactly. Classic, classic uh, effect where the coin changes back and forth and back again, and it's pretty clean and feels pretty great. And so Simon, of course, has got a wonderful sequence that allows him to do change to three successive coins and then hands it out pretty clean, pretty well, great. And it's pretty much as clean as the original. And but and it has that other impossibility in there that makes the whole thing a little bit more like, whoa, a little bit more mind blowing with the holes in them, right? And because it's clearly not the same coin. <laughs> yeah. Right, which would be an obvious way that uh, some of that could have got done. So it yeah. is a bit of a magician's fooler, but it does illustrate that point we really like to really focus on a lot when we can, which is that he it may have been built with some things in it to, to astonish people that knew the trick already, but at the same time, he ended up making that trick, I think, uh, pretty good case could be made for that trick being more deceptive and fooling to people who had never seen the trick before as well. I agree with that. You a spellbound guy, Steve? Not a lot, uh, I, a little bit. But what's good about this is the premise, too. The premise for the coin changing. It's like in, in this place, you know, in England, they use this, and right? And so it gives a nice little flow to the whole thing. I think it's a, it's a great little trick. It's really um, awesome. It's yeah, I think it's something, you know, that's real playable. Yeah, agreed. Now, now, for Simon Aronson, is it fair to say that a coin routine like this is pretty much the exception, right? This is the obligatory coin trick that appears once in a blue moon when you've got a, a 
a well-ensconced Kardashian such as Simon Aaron. This is the one. Yeah, this is the coin trick. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like the one that's attached to him because people will say like, you know, Simon does all this great card stuff. You ever seen him do that coin trick? And it's like in hushed tones, right? Because mm -hmm. he's got the, you know, it's, it's a magician fooler essentially. Yeah. And so uh, fortunately, and as wonderful it was as it was, you know, we can watch some card magic now. Let's watch some card magic. And this one, this one is, uh, this is pretty different and interesting because it sort of takes a left turn in the middle and it's, you know, it's, it's great. You're going to, you're going to love this one. This is a really cool card trick. Thank you. you know, I have friends on the inside that help me with my magic. Let, let me show you. I'll tell you what we'll do. <clears throat> Can I, I'd like you to cut off a, uh, slightly less than half the deck so yeah mm -hmm. that's good sure and look at the card you cut to right at the bottom right there you go look at it you can show it around don't let me see it okay and while we're over here susie why don't you cut off a nice healthy chunk okay got a good chunk you cut off, look at the card you cut to that's fine remember show it around that's great both of you remember your cards can i put your pack right on back on top put it back over there now, I told you I have friends on the inside. <clears throat> if I just say the magic word, Merkel Funsky, <laughs> that's, of course. Watch what happens. Two cards have magically turned over in the deck. Look at that. I didn't say they'd be your cards. <laughs> <laughs> well, these jokers are my friends. They live inside the deck. And because they're inside the deck, they can watch and see exactly what happened. For example, this joker here was watching exactly what you did. And it saw exactly where you cut. Now, it's a little shy, so it's going to only whisper to me. Like that. Oh, yeah. He, he, told me, he, he told me that you cut to the 18th card. OK, let's check, all right? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the 18th card. But we won't stop there because we have another card, right? <laughs> Susie, this joker was watching your every move. And, oh, yeah, that's right, she did. Um, she, he said she cut very deep, okay? Cut down to 43, okay? Well, let's just check, okay? This is the 43rd card. One, the, wait, wait a minute. We've counted off eight, 18. 18. So this will be the 19th card, 20. 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, sorry. 30? 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, the 43rd card. Now... Let's check to see how well these jokers were watching. What card did you cut to? The Ace of Diamonds. The Ace of Diamonds. Ace of Diamonds. And, what, and what, card did, what card did you cut to? The Five of Clubs. The Five of Clubs. Over here. Now, now, a lot of people are skeptical and think that just because these jokers are inanimate cardboard objects that they didn't really whisper those numbers to me. I know there are some doubting Thomases, but actually not only are they magicians, they are fortune tellers. Because this joker knew beforehand that you would cut to exactly at 18, and this joker knew that Susie would cut to 43. Pretty great. It's pretty, it's pretty great. Pretty great. <laughs> oh, what wow. fascinating application of that principle, right? It's pretty great. I just love to see something like that. You know, it's just so uh, satisfying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it yeah, looks I exactly think it's like great. it should. Yeah, it right, looks exactly right. like it should. There's just, you know, it's beautiful. You have proof at the end. I've done this trick a handful of times. I played with this concept and, and this specific routine. And uh, it gets great reactions, man. It's a really interesting card trick that doesn't look like most other pick-a-card tricks, you know? It's got a lot going on that makes it look fresh and different and 
it's just interesting and it's fun to perform because it's got these interesting lines that are intersecting that make the whole thing work and uh really cool really cool I, I like that trick a lot yeah i literally hadn't seen that one before so it was absolutely okay. absolutely okay. pleasant and and you're right it looks just like it's supposed to look yeah this last one was called uh, prior commitment Glenn Goldbeck is here from uh, L.A., and uh, he literally was screaming when he got in, not in a bad way, but calling out through the language of the chat, you know, like someone might say, Freebird! He was, he was sitting in chat saying, prior commitment! You know, so I could feel that there was a, a welling up of love for the effect, you know. Uh, and it's interesting that you should say that because the next one that you're going to play, uh, this is another one that makes Simon Aronson heads call out loud. You know, people say it's Simon Aronson. People say Red Sea Passover. People get very, very excited about this trick too. That's uh, very true. Next two, in fact, the next two are even ones that I've performed. So it is exciting stuff coming up. Get ready, friends. You're about to see Red Sea Passover. You know, there are two very different kinds of magic. First, there's physical magic that defies the laws of physical nature. Doing what our senses tell us is not possible. Then there's mental magic, magic that defies the laws of the mind, knowing what can't possibly be known. I am going to try to do both kinds of magic simultaneously under scientific laboratory conditions. <laughs> And I have my two uh, very able laboratory assistants, Susie and Lisa, okay? okay? Now, in a scientific experiment, it's very important to know exactly what physical objects you're dealing with. So, Lisa, I'd like you to take the blue deck okay. and deal off exactly 12 cards, one at a time, into a face-down pile, and count out loud so everybody knows what we're dealing with, okay? okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Great. 12 blue cards, mm -hmm. and I'd like to get 12 more red cards. Why don't okay. you just take them exactly the same, deal them right on top of the blue ones, okay? okay. 12 red cards. Twelve. We have exactly 24 physical objects. 12 mm -hmm. red and 12 blue. Mm -hmm. 12. 12 red cards over here and 12 blue cards. For the mental part, we need a strong, clear, powerful mind. That's why Susie's gonna help us, okay? <laughs> Susie, I'd like you to think of any one of the 12 red cards, but don't just settle on the very first obvious one that strikes you because I don't want you to feel psychologically influenced, all right? Okay. Have you got one? Yes. Good, you're thinking of one of these 12 cards. You're not thinking of the ace, were you? No. I didn't think so, you weren't that easy, no, okay. <laughs> Um, would you put your finger on these? Because in a scientific experiment, it's very important that no one tampers with this. So kind of hold on to that. And Lisa, mm -hmm. your job is to protect the blue cards, okay? okay. You do not have to think of one. Just okay. put out your finger, okay? And what we'll do is this. Why don't we um, put them face down? You can put your finger right there, and you guard them, okay? okay. Now, uh, the stage is set. Ordinarily, there wouldn't be uh, a loud clap of thunder or a big flash of lightning, but I like to settle for deafening silence. <laughs> Don't break it. Um, uh, that was perfect. I, I think that's, let's, let's just check what happened. Uh, let's check on the physical magic first, okay? Susie, would you, in a loud, clear voice, count your cards once more, uh, once more okay. okay? Face down, okay? All right. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, eleven. Uh, <laughs> one of those cards is missing, and it's not too hard to guess where it went. Lisa, I'd like you to also count, but before you do, just take those, and when you count, if you come to some amazing surprise, do not faint and do not stop counting. Okay. Count right to the end, okay? Okay. Okay, let's, let's see how what you got. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Thirteen cards, wow. and one of them is red. Yeah. Isn't nature's balance wonderful? Okay. <laughs> now, now, that's, 
that's, that's really fine for the physical part. But what about the mental part? Uh -huh. Susie, you were thinking of one card. Don't tell me what it is. Don't tell me what it is. But what I'd like you to do is just check these 11 red cards and see whether or not your card is still there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is it there? No. Whew, that's very comforting. <laughs> well, I, okay. For the first time, tell everybody what card you were thinking of. The two of spades. The two of spades. Yeah. I want to show you something. If you'll recall, you already know that among these cards is one, one red card, uh -huh. one red card, and it's not surprising that it is in fact. Wow. Wow. Susie. Two of Thank you. Pretty awesome, dude. <laughs> great trick. Another great one. That's a killer trick, you know. I mean, very few are the tricks that would uh, compel me to have a red deck and a blue deck out like that, but that's one of them. That's, that's really one of them. Tricks. Yeah. Very great, great trick. And for all of you uh, Magi out there who are looking for good material you know i think this one's in bound to please uh one of the greatest value books you'll ever get right uh it's also like self-working it's pretty much Almost. it's minimal minimal handling but yeah yeah it's one of the easier tricks you're gonna find you know certainly yeah. that kind of uh footprint left on the spectator's face so <laughs> no doubt Absolutely a killer trick. Red Sea Passover. So maybe I got the credits wrong, but uh, I know we... I think it might be an Aronson approach, now that you're, you're mentioning it. I think it might be an Aronson approach, the first one. You mean Red Sea Passover? The Red Sea Passover. I think it's in the big red book. Yeah, so he had a book called Bound to Please, which took all of his early stuff, including Shuffleboard and Red Sea Passover. And for all I know, prior commitment too, and put it all in one uh, hardcover book and it's just a really great way to get going with Simon Aronson even though he released many books after that you know all of them filled with great great magic and uh, that's a very good decision uh, Lotus I would go ahead and do that if I were you I would pick up that book if you can find it because it's definitely you know a major deal it's like there's more great magic in that per square page than you're going to find any other place. And speaking of real easy tricks to do, uh, we've got one more today that we're going to share. Yeah, this is like a real showpiece too, right? You'll see that there's plenty of people that have handled this effect and they've made it into, a, you know, something much bigger than it is. And Simon sort of came back around from his original uh, write-up of this that's in the, in the uh, book that Aaron's speaking of. In that bound to please and he added a whole new presentational ploy with a, a mark research study that made this whole thing just a little bit bigger so uh yeah it's it's really great it's a really great showpiece it's a little bit longer but it's totally worth it so let's check this out this is shuffleboard thank you thank you thank you you know you know one of the key elements of doing magic is knowing how people will behave for example, imagine how valuable it would be to a magician to know beforehand how people will shuffle the cards. Well, that information is so crucial to magicians that magicians have in fact commissioned a study, a market research study <laughs> on random shuffles. We have had th this study did thousands of, research, of, of random shuffles just to see how people will shuffle cards. Now, the, the results of this are amazingly accurate. And I'd like to show you because we, can, we could do one more random shuffle, random shuffle study just right here now. I've been shuffling the cards. They look pretty random, but let's uh, just get rid of the, the joker. Um, Frank, would you help me? Sure. Okay. Uh, the rules of cards basically say it's good to try to cut, shuffle them on the table. You can try to do that, okay? And um, can you do that? Sure. Okay, you can maybe just shuffle those on the table. Now, these are sort of random shuffles. I certainly am not controlling them, but we want to really randomize the deck. That's perfectly fine. Good. That, <laughs> nobody would. That's a, that's a good random shuffle. Great. Now, so what we'll do is this. Okay. Whoa. Okay. On the table. That's why. I, let's keep them on the table. Okay. Now, so far, these cards have been randomly shuffled, but we want to get some shuffles between them. So 
Would you just cut your deck in half and turn, okay, that's good, fine, and turn over either pile, whichever one you want. One. Great. Frank, same thing, cut it in half and turn over either pile. Good. Now why don't we just swap piles and Frank, we're going to shuffle these cards face up into, the, into yours and we'll shuffle yours over there. Now you might think that I did something when I did that, so why don't you keep them on the table, just give them a good random shuffle, that's good. And Frank, do the same, give them a good shuffle. We're mixing these cards totally random. Face up, face down cards, nobody knows how many cards are face up, how many cards are face down, which cards are where. Have we got that? Great. Now, but we said we wanted to combine the whole deck and do one, one random shuffle of the deck. Susie, why don't you turn one half over, turn that over, okay? The whole, the whole half over, the whole half, okay? And, and why don't you shuffle those two together? Okay. Perfect. Now you've got to admit, this is a random sample of shuffling. As a matter of fact, if we were any more random, the cards would be on the floor. <laughs> now let's just see how well this study is. This study was so precise that it was done at three different demographic levels. You see, the first demographic level over here is demographic level one, the general population at large. And this study says that over 50% of the people will randomly shuffle exactly 23 face-up cards. We had no idea how you were going to shuffle or which cards you'd be turning face up or which ones you'd be exchanging. But let's see, 23 cards face up. Let's just check how close that study is. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. But, but you know something? This study went further because magicians weren't just interested in the general population at large. No, we are interested in a much more precise audience. That is, audiences watching magic. <laughs> so at demographic level number two, this study studied all the shuffles of audiences watching magic and found that over 75% will randomly shuffle so that the face-up pile has 16 black cards. I, you guys, you guys are pretty random, don't you? I'm, well, let's just take. It said 16 black cards. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Exactly sixteen black cards. Killing. You know something? You know something? Magicians wanted to know something even more precise because it's nice to know about audiences watching magic, but what about the two people who actually come from the audience, come out there and come up here to help us? Well, we went to demographic level number three. Mm -hmm. And at demographic level number three, it's discriminating intelligent helpers, <laughs> you see? And this study found that of the discriminating intelligent helpers, 99.3% will randomly shuffle so that the face-up red cards are all hearts. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Oh. Well, but you know, well. It's a 99.3. 99, exactly. You see, you know, wait a minute. Because, first of all, every, every, this, is, this study was, I think the result here is because that's for discriminating intelligent helpers. No, no wait, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say that. How, these guys, these guys obviously were discriminating and intelligent enough to come and help me. I think what it is, is that all statistics leave a little bit of room for error. It's wiggle room. You see, there is room for a margin of error. And 
even though we missed on the six of diamonds, I believe this study did say that there was <laughs> there was six of diamonds. Thank you. You see? Thank you very much for being such a random thing. Thank you. Pretty great. I mean, we just said that about the last one, but dang. Oh, man, dude. Never, oh, seen, never seen it fail. Never seen it fail. Mm -hmm. And as great as the trick is, how that little piece of paper is folded is really clever, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so you could just print it out one on each side. It's got that little cut in the middle. He's done so many great things, and that is a fantastic trick that anybody could do. Yeah, it's, it's it's not you know roving uh, walk around magic. It's formal close up stuff, uh, mm -hmm. all parlor stuff. But it's really in that in that space. It's just wonderful. You know what I mean? If you have people and you have the time, it's really interesting, engaging, multiple climaxes, big surprise after that. Just really great, great magic. You know, and That's wonderful. And it's not a pick a card trick per se, but it has that feeling at the end anyway, you know, right. you still get a reveal, but nobody picked a card, you know, and it, it's kind of neat. It's like a whole different flavor. Agreed. Absolutely. Great, great trick, man. I've, uh, I've had this in and out of my set forever. Aaron's had it in and out of his set forever. I've played with different ways in the presentation. I love the, the market research study. I think that's a really interesting uh, hook to get people interested in just playing along and being in the game with you. And it, uh, mm -hmm. it plays really well. And you're right, the way the whole thing folds so that they don't see that ending coming that you go, bam, and that's the six of diamonds. It's uh, it's pretty great, man. This is, it's just a kind of a trick. And it's, you know, when you need to fill a, a five minute spot, it's it's a nice thing to have in your back pocket when you're yeah. building a set and you're looking for something that sort of plays to more intelligent spectators like aaron said that have a little bit more time a little bit more patient where you have time to just hang out with them this is a great piece to just connect and just you know be present with the people it's lovely you know one thing that simon was you know he set up that red sea passover with that wonderful setup about mentalism and magic and mental magic and this is another it's a really great setup that sort of really describes a whole swath of some of the best magic we do which isn't technically mentalism but is a bit of a hybrid between uh knowing things you can't possibly know and then making magic happen it's just a heck of a good setup a good premise you know it's really great and i think as simon got older he just got more and more interested in in in, in presentation, you know, I think uh, he's spending a lot more time hanging out with uh, John Bannon and his uh, local lawyerly session group there in Chicago. And, right. uh, and I just think uh, that was really something that you could see his taste just became more and more tuned to, to all the interesting things that can be done with the magic besides the uh, sort of Marlovian method emphasis. It's really true, especially with, you know, eventually we're going to get into seeing Simon work with uh, with his wife and they they have a mind reading act and it's pure mind reading. Like it just appears to be pure mind reading. And when you're doing something like that, it has to inform the other magic stuff in some way. Right. Because you're creating miracles by doing this other other type of show. And I would imagine if it were me, you know, it just makes you would make me feel like I want to elevate the other other stuff. I want those card tricks to look more like that other stuff because the actions you get from mind reading are just huge because it feels real. And when you start to incorporate that into regular magic tricks, it elevates them to something that they can't be otherwise. And it's it's wonderful. It, it really strengthens everything, in my opinion. I couldn't agree with you more. Now, for the those of you who are members of the CC Club, we are going to invite you to stick around a little while. We may uh, chat a little bit about some of the interesting aspects of these uh, methods that we like uh, so much. For those of you that are watching us uh, who are not in the club, thanks for joining us today. Do us a favor. If you're watching and hearing the sound of my voice, make sure to click that fantabulous follow button and that salacious subscribe button. And you'll get notified the next time we go live, which will be in just a couple days. So see you all soon. And club members, make sure to stick around and join us.